Welcome to Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast. I'm your host, Vista Chamber CEO, Rachel Beld, and it's my privilege to interview the movers, shakers, and change makers impacting our amazing Vista community and beyond. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Silvia Rocha Espino, who's the Vice President of People and Culture at Watkins Wellness. She's responsible for leading the HR team globally. Her team develops strategy and solutions in areas such as talent acquisition, development, compensation, and employee wellness. She partners with leadership enterprise-wide to maximize the success of their organization, drive towards achieving business initiatives, and most importantly, ensure that their employees thrive. Sylvia has an MBA in global management from ASU Thunderbird School of Global Management, a master's degree in organizational psychology, and a bachelor's degree in psychology from Universidad de las Americas Puebla. Welcome, Sylvia. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Very, very excited. Thank you. Thank you. So before we learn more about you, first, let's tell folks, if they don't know, what does Watkins Wellness do? What do you do there? Yeah, of course. Watkins Wellness is a company where we manufacture and sell um, hot tubs, spas, aquatic fitness pools, and now recently saunas. We just acquired a company a year ago. Okay. Yeah, we've been in Vista or in Southern California for about 40, 42 years. Okay. So we are the second largest employer in the city of Vista. Exciting. Yes. And you're an international company. Yep. So you have offices around the globe. So you really work um, in your role with a global team. You oversee um, HR functions for the entire organization, yes? Yeah, that's correct. So we have employees all over Europe, really. We have people in Sweden, Finland, UK, you know, you, Belgium, you name it. We also have a lot of employees in across the United States. Most of our c- sales teams are across the United States. Okay. And our biggest or largest manufacturing uh, facilities are in Mexico. So we have now four big manufacturing facilities in Tijuana, just across the border. Wow, okay. And so here at your Vista location, you have uh, some manufacturing functionality there. You have a large manufacturing plant. And what else do you do here in the Vista location? Yes, so Vista is our headquarters. So we have a large manufacturing site where we make our hot tubs and we also make some aquatic fitness pools in there. Uh, We have our design and innovation team. So that's where, you know, all the magic happens in terms of designing, innovating new products and, you know, just growing the business. And we also have all of our support functions, finance, IT, engineering, they're all located in our Vista locations as well. Okay. Um, And so it's interesting to me that Watkins Wellness manufactures, for the hot tub specifically, a number of lines. So if people have a hot tub in their home, is a really good chance that it's made by Watkins Wellness. So for Watkins Wellness, for the sales of the hot tubs mm-hmm. and for the what you manufacture, are you do you have Watkins stores or do you work with a third party vendor system? How does that work? Yeah, we work with our um, dealers. We have a, 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 okay. a big uh, dealer network across the United States. So we do directly to our dealers, and then our dealers go to the customers, and you know we have them all across the United States. So when you Google for, you know, a hot spring spa or Watkins Wellness Spa, it's going to take you to the dealer that's closest to your home. Okay, got it, got it. So um, I want to learn a little bit more about you. And um, obviously, you have several degrees, you have uh, uh, this kind of global focus. So tell me about growing up. What what did you did you always know that you wanted to work with people and be in, in people management? Tell me a little bit about your growing up. Not about people management, but I'll get there. So, well, born and raised in Mexico, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, my dad had a farm and like I always say, I grew up as the farm was growing as well. I remember, you know, looking at my dad in the morning and I was really, really young and it's like, I got to go to the farm. And, you know, he had a small number of cows and, you know, a small piece of land where he was growing potatoes and now his business has thrived and he has a pretty large, you know, um, agricultural business in Mexico. Which still operating today? Still operating. Oh, wow. He's still working it. I don't know how he does it. Super mm-hmm. proud of him. And my brother is also part of that now. So okay. it's, a, it's still a family business growing as a company now, but um, uh, a family business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I grew up there about an hour away from the farm. So my dad always commuted. And so I always learned that from him that... If there is a job, it doesn't matter where it is. You're going to either drive it or, you know, you, you you have to make it. You have to work hard to get to where you wanted to mm-hmm. get. And I think that's something that I learned from him at a very early age. 
Um, so I always, even though, you know, it was a very good business and we were always taken care of, like always, always taken care of by my dad. Um, I was always striving to do something else, right? And so when I went to college, I really didn't need it, but I worked to get a scholarship and, you know, just contribute to my to, to my family in ways that I could help. Because mm-hmm. I know I had two other siblings, you know, younger, and I could see the struggles and everything. So it was important for me. It's always been important to me that it's not just me going through life, but that I am leaving something behind. I think mm-hmm. that's really what moves me. Um, so going to the people management, I, no. <laughs> I wanted to be a psychologist. I wanted to be either a guidance counselor Mm -hmm. or a clinical psychologist. That was the that was the two things. And that's what I went to university for. That's what I went to school for. But I fell into HR by accident. I, you know, met uh, someone who gave me the opportunity to work in HR without me really knowing what it was. And they said, we can teach you, we can train you. We feel like you have that personality. And so that's uh, when I started working for it. And I fell in love with the job. I fell in love with really what caught me was it was a it was a staff of very young people. Mm. I was one of the oldest in the staff and I was very, very young at the time. And um, it was to see I, I was in charge of like the orientation. Right. And making seeing the people make connections and like aha moments to say oh uh, yes I could do that or this is a good place for me and seeing that that would help them fall in love with the company and really engage with the company and and, you know that's what really that's what it's like oh okay cool I I think I can do this and so that's how I started growing in, in the HR space. That's so fascinating because it's really not that far off from being a guidance counselor <laughs> or working in psychology, I could definitely see how um, an educational background in psychology would be beneficial working in in an HR role. Have you seen other ways that where your education has supported your work and connections there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, even from interviewing a candidate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the tools that I used at the beginning of my career came from my expertise in you know clinical psychology because that's what I knew you know that's what I knew how to do and so definitely I I, I, you know I've always said if you're an HR and you come from a psychology background or have taken some psychology courses it's definitely going to help because you do learn a lot to a lot about people right and you know to you know learning what motivates people is the most important thing because at the end of the day everybody's motivated by something different. Mm -hmm. And if you can identify what those things are, then you can tailor your rewards, your recognition, your wellness programs, all of those things around what really moves people. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be able to engage different people at different levels from different, you know, different ways, using different different methods i guess yes yeah um well and it also sounds that like mentorship is also an important component of that either from that first example of 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 kind of guiding younger employees or working with folks but has mentorship been important to you have you had an important anybody in your life who's been an important mentor to you oh absolutely i think um definitely you know uh, i call him alfonso he is one of the biggest mentors that i've had because he really taught me what hr was in the modern real world right not so much i mean you always have the transactional tactical hr stuff that you have to do right but he really taught me that hr is above and beyond that and the value that it can bring to a business right and and really taking the development the talent development really recognizing the employees their potential where they could go and how that works um to the employee advantage and at the same time to the employer advantage right because you're developing them they can grow as you grow your business so um yeah he was a great mentor of mine he really helped me shift the mindset that i had about business and hr stuff like that and then when i came to the united states 
Um, I came in because I was working for a company in Mexico, but it was a global company as well. And that promoted me to a global role that required me to move to to uh, the United States. And I also had, I think, three great mentors at that company, Jason and the two Karens, because they're both named Karen. Mm-hmm. And they really helped me understand what it was needed in the U.S. to be successful, right? Because it's a different culture. It's still business, and the company is the company. Mm -hmm. The cultural aspects of the company are the same, but the way in which you conduct yourself and all of those things are very, very different. And so without them, I don't think that I would have the success that I've had so far in my career. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had to give some advice to someone maybe coming up through the ranks in HR. Um, do you have anything that you you think that is a key nugget that you've learned that you would want to impart wisdom on kind of the next generation coming up? Quite frankly, don't be afraid. Okay. Because HR being a function where businesses are still figuring it out, right? Like not everybody has HR as one of their key departments or key positions, right? And 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 uh, I've heard of companies wanting or trying to get rid of the HR department, right? Because they think they, you know, that they don't need the department or outsource it or outsource right. it or anything mm-hmm. like that. And and really, don't be afraid of raising your hand. Don't be afraid of knocking the door of that leader and say, "Hey, I want to partner with you. I want to work alongside you." Because something that I've noticed along my career is what makes it successful, enjoyable, and really what really makes a difference is when the leader that you support and the HR person, when you're connected. Mm -hmm. So it's always about being a coach and a confidant of that person to be able to grow the team, right? And so if you can establish that relationship, that's the best thing you could do to, 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 to carry it to carry it on. So that's a great segue into my next question, which is really about your experience at Watkins. I know you've been there about four years. So tell me how uh, your experience about helping to cultivate that culture and management of people and just how things are done at Watkins. So I can't really take all of the credit for the great culture that we have at Watkins, right? It takes a lot of people. And Watkins being a company of about 42 years, you know, it, you know, people who worked in my role before, they really were very intentional about making sure that the values were not just a check the mark, you know, check the box um, poster or on the website type of a thing, but that each employee really understood the values and lived the values. And so that has been a game changer. So when I came in, I quickly realized that one of the reasons why uh, Watkins has the culture that we have is because it's not just the HR department working on the values, it's all of the leadership team. Everybody works together to make sure that those values are lived in everything we do. And when we don't, our employees call us on it, right? Mm-hmm. And they say, hey, one of our values is this, what's, what's up with that, right? And so we are a people-focused organization as well. We One of our values is to be accommodating. And we are always going to listen. We're always going to try to accommodate as much as we can because we're still a business mm-hmm. and we still have to hold each other accountable and hold people accountable and all of that. But where we can accommodate, we will we will accommodate and there's times where we have to make exceptions and stuff like that. But we know that is going to, you know, uh, Steve Hammock, who was a pre- our previous president, mm-hmm. you know, great he, guy, he, great guy. Fantastic. He hired me. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was one of the quite frankly, he was probably the most important reasons why I moved from where I was to walk in wellness because he really sold me on mm-hmm. the values. But he used to say, you know, if you treat your employees well, right? Any day of the business, every single day, when there are problems, they're going to, they're going to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were able to see that during the pandemic, right? Uh, We've always been very fair with our employees. We were always, you know, very good to our employees. And when the the times when were tough during the pandemic, you can imagine our demand went through the roof because everybody was at home. Everybody wanted a hot tub. I wanted one. I didn't get one, but I wanted one. (laughs) So everybody wanted a hot tub. And 
we couldn't bring everybody back to work because of the six feet mm-hmm. social distancing restrictions and those type of things. So we had people working 24 seven pretty much. And it was really tough on our employees. But, you know, um, they they were very loyal. They were very good. And even through the pandemic and after the pandemic, our attrition was minimum within our um, within our business. I mean, we retain about 90, I want to say 94, 97, maybe percent of our employees wow. here at Vista. And That's our, huge. That's huge. Yeah, and our tenure, no one else has those numbers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And our tenure is like average 10 years. So our people stay. So it's, it's, it, they do stay, they do live the values, and uh, we, we value that tremendously. The Vista Viking Festival returns for its 22nd year this September 21st and 22nd at the Antique Gas and Steam Engine Museum in Vista, California. More axes, more mead, and more parking for 2024. Stay up to date and get your tickets today for the Vista Viking Festival at vistavikingfestival.com. That's amazing. Uh, so the average tenure of an employee is 10 years, but I know you have employees who've worked there oh. 30 the, since the start of the company. Since the start of the yes. company, yes. We just had our service award celebration not too long ago, and we gave a couple of 40-year awards. That's amazing. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get to that 45 with a couple of them in a few years. So it's, wow. it's just amazing wow. how long they've been with the company. And they will tell you about, they remember when the company started and the growth and the changes that they've gone through. So, yeah, it's it's really, it's it's a very different company in that way. Um, we we do care for our people. Yeah, that's, it's it's evident. Um, what are, you mentioned accommodating. What What's another one of your values that you want to share? Yeah, for sure. I think transparency is okay. the most important thing. We have constant meetings with all of our employees we have town halls we um, send out a business review every month letting our employees know the state of the business what we're doing well what we're not doing so well the type of help we need from them and so i think that that transparency is also valued um, by everybody right because even the people in the operation who might not understand everything about the business they understand what it is that they need to make, how many every day, right? And whether they're having quality issues or not. So everybody understands their job and how that impacts the bigger business and the bigger picture of the business. So um, I think transparency definitely is is top in, 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 in our values. And my, you know, one of my, um, I would say favorite um, ones is just inclusion, just being a company where Everybody is welcome. You know, when we talk about, you know, sometimes when you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, there's a lot of division that comes from just that term. Which is the opposite of what it's trying to do. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so the way in which we define it at Walkins, and what I keep reminding people is, this is not about the vision. This is about every single person who comes into our company, regardless of background, regardless of anything, Right they feel that they are in a safe space. And mm-hmm. when I talk about a safe space, of course, safety in the job, but they're not going to feel judged. They're not going to feel emotionally threatened. safe. Mm-hmm. They're going to exactly the psychological mm-hmm. safety. That's what we call it at walk-ins. Mm-hmm. And so they feel they're in a safe place, in a safe environment where they can be themselves. And that's what we want from our people. We don't want them to resent that they can't be themselves. And, and, and you know, we, we want them to be themselves. And that's helped us a lot um, with the engagement and just the retention of our employees. That's great. I know Watkins also has some core values around philanthropy. And so I, I'm curious if you could share a little bit about the philosophy and where that spirit comes from. Yeah, yeah. of course. No, I, yes. We have a program that's called Watkins Cares. And what we do with Walkins Cares is we are, we know that we are who we are and we've been able to get to where we have been able to get to because of the people from our community. They are the people who work for us, right? And, and specifically Vista, but North County as well. We have a lot of people from North County. And so what we try to do is if we're taking, right, we're taking from the city, we're taking resources, we're doing all of these things, we need to find a way to give back. And we're going to find a way to give back that is 
valuable and meaningful to our community, but to our employees as well. So our employees get to decide uh, who or in what causes they want to support. And we will work with them so that we can either sponsor an event or maybe match a contribution mm-hmm. or, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. So that's something that we really work towards is making sure that what we're contributing to is valuable to our employees. It's not just whatever leadership decides. You know, It's not another do. check the box situation, right? Exactly, right. exactly. And I think something that we're very proud of is the scholarships that we've been able to. Yes, with to Rising provide. Star. Yes, I was just exactly. going to mention that. Watkins has been the presenting sponsor of that program for the last several years, as long as I've been here, which is almost six years. We're so grateful for that support. And one of the things that's great about our Rising Star program program is that every dollar that goes into that program goes right back to students, right back to the students. We really are able to stretch those dollars so far. So we're so grateful and so, and thankful for the support of Watkins Wellness for our Rising Star program. We're now, this is our 11th year. And over the last 10 years, we've given out almost $130,000 in scholarships, thanks That's to the amazing. generosity of our, of our partners like Watkins Wellness. So thank you so much for that. What are some of the other, uh, if you don't mind sharing, some of the other organizations that you support? I know the Boys and Girls Club is someone yes. that you support. I actually serve on the board of the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, nice. So I was, I'm familiar with your work there. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, Boys and Girls Club is, is big for us, big, big, big for us. And like I said, right, I mean, if we're going to be contributing to the community, we do believe that you know, kids, children, they deserve all of the support, right? The, the, the better opportunities we can give them, it's going to be better for them in the future. And at the end of the day, they might, might end up working with us, right? When Absolutely. They grow up. And, and, and that's what we need. We need people who, who want to grow, who want to go to school and, and, and we want to facilitate that for them. So uh, the Boys and Girls Club for us is a great partnership. We participate in the summer programs all the time. You know, the back to school bash and stuff like that where we gave... Um, backpacks. Backpacks, yes. yes. <laughs> backpacks full of stuff. So it's, it's always a very nice um, thing for us to do. We also have somebody from the executive team uh, on the board mm-hmm. of Venkat. And so, you know, we're definitely very committed to... Uh, the Boys and Girls Club, we're also working with, um, what's the name of this foundation? I forget. What do they do? Hi, the, for the kids, the Make It, Make a Wish. Oh, Make a Wish, the yeah. Make a Wish Foundation, which supports student or children who are, have significant health challenges yes. and helping to make a wish come true. Yes. That's such an important organization, really special. Yeah. So that's great that you're able to support yeah. them. So so a lot of youth and youth-focused uh, philanthropy for Watkins. Yes, a And lot. your employees vote and choose those yes. organizations. Yes, for yeah. sure. And we also, we always invite them, right, to be part of the, you know, there's galas and all of these things. We want all of our employees to be part of that. So we typically raffle the tickets it's not you know a couple of executives taking advantage of the event right we raffle the tickets we make sure that everybody is involved in in everything we do that's great that's great i have to say i visited your location in vista uh, not too long ago i had an excellent tour it was so cool uh, but i loved that you have a room where your employees can take a break and you can book a hot tub just like a meeting room and have a little dip at lunchtime I know. That sounds really nice. I love it. And, you know, we're a wellness company, mm-hmm. right? And and I think we transition from being a manufacturing company to a wellness company. That's a huge distinction. It is. Yeah. It definitely is. Because we truly believe that what we make, our products, are definitely going to make you healthier and better and feel better and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So we, we went from a manufacturing company to a wellness company, but it would not be the walk-ins way, right? If we didn't offer that same wellness opportunity to our own employees as well. So we have a spa that they can use or a couple of spas that they can book. We can book, all of us. And there's also uh, an aquatic fitness pool. Oh, right. we have in the middle there where um, you book it, like a meeting room, like you said, and then you can go and exercise there for, you know, 30 minutes, whatever time you have open and available to exercise so there's a lot of opportunity for us we care a lot about our employees wellness one of the biggest programs that we have is our wellness um our wellness programs and so we're calling it now wellness 360 uh, because we want to make sure that our employees understand 
that wellness is not just your physical health. Mm-hmm. When we talk about wellness, we talk about mental health, we talk about physical health, of course, but also financial health mm. and how to help our employees really save. It's not just 401k, right? But all of the different education that comes around long-term savings. A lot of our employees, specific, specifically on our production floor, there are people who come from Mexico mm-hmm. or other countries and they're not used to a 401k program. They're not used to saving for the future. And so all of this education that we can do around the different financial programs that we offer, it's also part of their wellness. And so I, this is a this is we're pivoting to this where, you know, we're saying, OK, now your wellness. Yes, your physical health is important and we're going to keep supporting that. But there is more. And let us help you. Let us, you know, support you with with those areas of, of wellness as well. That's so important. You know, um, it's really, really important for people to think about the future. And oftentimes uh, when you're busy, when you're working, when you, you know, when your car, my car just broke, I'm gonna have to pay $2,000 to fix it. You know, you think about those things and it's hard to always plan for the future, but it's so important because someday all of us, our bodies will slow down and we won't be able to do the things that we did before and we need the financial resources to continue on to continue having a home and having a life and you know buying food and taking care of ourselves and our families as we go on so it's really important distinction around around um health and wellness it's not just about about mental health which is really important physical health um but that financial piece is really really important um that's so great um so it sounds like you really love your work I do. I really love working for Watkins. It was, you know, it came to me at the right time. At the Timing is really important. Yes, it yes. came to me at the right time. You know, I was not looking for another job, but there was something about Watkins that caught my attention. And we had a great conversation. And that employee focus, people focus slash values combo uh, is really what sold me to to join walk-ins wow yeah that's fantastic well as we're wrapping kind of wrapping up our conversation i want to ask is there anything about watkins or about yourself that we didn't talk about i know you're a mom yep so um i'm just curious if there was anything else that we that we didn't talk about that you'd like to share you know i think something that is important to share about both walk-ins and the personal life right because a lot of people talk about work-life balance Mm -hmm. and what that really means and i think for us at walk-ins with our work-life balance um, value and our accommodating value and all of those things, right? I think that really understanding the what you go through, right, in your personal life. And, and you know, now I have a, a teenager in high school. I have a, a little one in fourth grade. And, and, and really your needs change. And it's really hard sometimes to juggle the the home the activities and um work and you know being a working mom i mean being a mom it's hard it's hard it's really hard right and then on top of that you also have your job and you have all of these things and i think that just developing leaders and i think that's what we're trying to do at walk-ins right now with our psychological safety right is developing leaders that can understand that people have different needs they have different lives and we need to treat instead of treating everybody the same some people we need special accommodations because of the special circumstances in their lives i think that developing that type of leader is going to be really important for our continued success and growth and so that's what we're working on right now it's a lot of psychological safety making sure that we understand how people want to be treated so that we can treat them that way. Yeah, I think that's a great lesson for all of us and for other organizations as well. You know, my my husband's a teacher and he has something that he says when our kids say, oh, that's not fair. You know, so-and-so got this and I didn't get that. It's not fair. And uh, my husband says, you know, fairness isn't everyone gets the same. It's everyone gets what they need. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. And that sounds like it's, you know, definitely... um, important to the culture at at Watkins. And I'm just so thankful that you shared all of that with me today. Um, And I'm just honestly just so proud that Vista is home to Watkins Wellness. When I visit other people, I go visit family members in other states and, um, you know, they have a spa and I say, oh, oh, it's a caldera. (laughs) This, you know, this is from Vista. This is from Vista. So it's, it's really fun. And it's a source of pride to know we have a lot of really cool things that are made in Vista. We're, we're really a community of makers. 
from craft food and drinks to the manufacturing products that are made in the business park. And so it's a really a source of pride. So thank you for, for sharing all of that. I do have a few rapid fire questions I ask every guest. All right. Are you ready? All right. Okay. Okay. So the first is, can you tell me a book that you think everyone should read? A recommendation. Yes. It is called, and bear with me, because when you hear it, you're going to be like, the, it is called The Art of War for Women. Okay. It's, Tell me more. It's, and it's for, and I recommend these to male and female, same, uh, all genders. I love this book. It's not a feminist wor- book or anything like that, but it really talks about the different challenges that we have as women and how we confront certain situations and challenges and stuff like that and how we can start changing our mindset and some of the way in which we address is, in, in which we address issues or problems or obstacles along the way. Mm-hmm. And it talks, It's you can apply it to anything, work, family, anything it's anything. just amazing yeah I the really, art really of like war for women for women okay yes. very it's a quick read very good read excellent thank yeah. you thanks for that yeah. i will add that to to my list okay next up tell me a song that you always you got to turn it up what's your jam fields of gold sting <gasps> that's all a the good way. one yes that's a good one yes that's oh. that's my go-to song for whatever yeah <laughs> sad happy whatever it is that's... you're singing along yep. you're belting it out yep. yep that's a good one yeah i, love I don't it. think anyone's ever mentioned sting on the podcast before oh, so that's a good one i'm so a you'll... huge fan of sting yeah. by the way yeah. he's amazing <laughs> yeah. amazing amazing okay um tell me something that inspires you something that inspires me mm-hmm I have to say something that inspires me. I think there's there are many things, but if I have to choose one is when I see somebody who comes like me, right? Somebody who is coming from a different country or has language barriers or, you know, um, little girls um, in, in school, when I see them, overcoming challenges when I see them going through and breaking those barriers it really inspires Mm -hmm. me I'm all about um girl power in a way uh but you know I'm I'm a Hispanic you know woman in leadership is like double warming of any you know every single category and you know it's do not yeah it's just be who you are do not diminish where you come from because at the end of the day that's what's going to get you to where you want to be is just accept your your entire self. And when I see little girls doing that or, you know, people doing that, it just really moves me. Yeah. You have grit and you admire it in others. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That grit. And you know people have it and they can fight and they can do it. And that's, that's great. And you're a great example to others of just – hard work, being smart, making good choices, finding the right mentors, mentoring others along the way. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. that's fantastic. That. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, my last question. Okay. Tell me a Vista business that deserves a shout out. Ooh, okay. I have my favorite Vista business. It's a very small business. It's called SA Beauty. Okay. And again, is owned by a Mexican woman. She, um, moved a few years ago from Mexico to the U.S. and she moved uh, here because her husband is a U.S. citizen and all of that. So okay. she had to make the move. You know, when she lived in Mexico, she owned her own business. She was very successful. She had already gone through all the schooling that she needed to go to to be successful. And when she got here, she realized she couldn't do it because you need to get certified again and, you know, all of that. So she had to go through all of that schooling again and had to work for a few other salons and other places and now she owns her own it's a small business uh but she is fantastic she's a really really hard working uh person i think her business is probably a year old okay so all the help we can send her way would be yeah. fantastic so is it hair skin what does she do she does hair lashes extensions you name it she, wow uh, makeup yeah Fantastic. S.A. Beauty. S.A. Beauty. Okay. Yes. Thank you yes. for the recommendation. I always could use a little more, a little help in the beauty department. <laughs> I think we all we can. We all can. <laughs> yeah, we all can. We all can. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I really appreciated your candor and everything that you had to share. So no, thank, thank you. you so much. It was a pleasure to thank be here. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to our guest, Sylvia Rocha Espino of Watkins Wellness. And thank you for listening to Velocity. If you like what you heard, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and tell a friend. 
Help us move Vista forward with velocity. The Vista Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization that serves as a catalyst for business growth. Find us online at vistachamber.org.